how often should you be billing your members? Should you charge monthly? Should you charge annually? Or is there a better way to go? I'm going to be answering that question on today's episode of the Membership Guys podcast. You're listening to the Membership Guys podcast, bringing you proven practical tips and advice from the leading experts on growing a successful membership business each and every week. And now, here's your host, Mike Morrison. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 324 of the Membership Guys podcast. I'm your host, Mike Morrison. Thanks so much for joining me today. In today's episode, we continue our little trip into the vault as we've gone back into the archives from years gone by of the Membership Guys podcast and picked out some hand-picked episodes where we can revisit some of the most commonly asked questions, some of the most important subjects, and some advice that you've got to hear. We do this a couple of times a year just to make sure that those of you who haven't been listening to the show since it's first launched back in 2015, to make sure that you actually get some of the golden nuggets that were shared years ago that are still relevant today. So this week, we're addressing a question, a decision that comes up so frequently from people when they're starting their membership. And indeed, when they've got their membership up and running and they're trying to refine and perfect things. And that is, how often should you be charging your members? Should you be billing monthly or should you be billing them annually? Now, this seems like quite a small decision. And on paper, it's an easy decision to make. But the truth is, your billing frequency affects so many different aspects of your membership strategy. It can affect your ability to generate sales. It can affect engagement levels inside your membership. It can affect member retention, not to mention the implications that it has on your business itself in terms of cash flow, stability, predictability of income, and all that stuff. So back in episode 111, I dug deep into the pros and cons of each of those main types of subscription frequency, monthly and annually billing, and also presented some additional and alternative options for how often to charge your members. So as we delve back from the vault with this episode, you're going to learn the pros and cons of monthly versus annual. You're going to learn the psychological triggers that are involved when someone is trying to decide to join your membership and how your pricing structure fits with those. We're also going to look at why offering both pricing options can work even better than just offering one of them. And as mentioned, we're going to dig into some alternative options you might not have thought of about your membership billing frequency. So without further ado, let's dive back into the vault, going all the way back to episode 111, Should I Charge Monthly or Annually for My Membership Website? So first of all, I want to talk about some of the pros and the cons of monthly versus annual. The obvious benefit of having a monthly pricing option is that typically your monthly payments are going to be a lot more affordable than asking someone to cough up one big lump sum to pay for 12 months of access. This also means not only is it a little bit kinder on the budget, but it's also less risk. When people are deciding to join your membership, there's all sorts of factors, all sorts of questions, all sorts of concerns and worries going through their head. Is this going to live up to expectations? is what's been promised on the sales page going to actually be reflected on what's in there in the membership am i going to regret my decision to join when someone is joining on a monthly subscription there is far less risk because the worst case scenario you've only paid for a month even if there's not a money back guarantee or maybe there is one but they don't follow through or whatever the worst case scenario you've lost one month of payment, which is probably going to be $30, $40, $50 versus the risk that comes from potentially spending five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a year's subscription and then finding out that it's not the right decision for you. So that reduction of risk can play a big factor in getting more people to join your membership site. And even though it is a more frequent payment and it'll cost them more over time, it's a lot easier for people to fit into their budget. And this is going to be particularly important if your market is a one where they've got loads of different subscriptions that they're paying for, lots of tools and services and so on. Or 
if your market is one that's a little more budget conscious, perhaps they don't have quite as much disposable income. There's also, with your monthly billing, potentially less issues when it comes to the repeat billing versus a larger sum that only gets charged once per year. So if you're billing someone $500 a year, then while their first payment might be successful, 12 months is a long time. It's a big gap between that first billing and that second billing and then the third. There's so much that can happen. Their card might expire. They may change banks. Maybe they previously had an overdraft and they no longer have an overdraft. Maybe they've forgotten about the fact that their repeat billing is going to come up. And so all these sorts of things and more can cause major problems if you've got a recurring annual subscription. Whereas with monthly, there's far less issues because people will not forget about the fact that they pay necessarily. Because it's a smaller amount, then there's less chance that there'll be problems if someone perhaps wasn't expecting to be rebilled or they forgot their payment day. $50 coming out of their account isn't going to cause them anywhere near as many problems as an unexpected lump sum of five or $600 coming out of their account could do. You know, that sort of thing, if someone's not expecting it, could send people in their overdraft, could completely wipe out the money they've got in their account. More chance somebody's got enough sitting in their account to cover a $30, $40, $50 monthly payment than they have a six, seven, eight hundred dollar annual payment. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Now, from your point of view, for your business, having a higher quantity, so more people paying you smaller amounts, it gives you more stability. Because if you've got three, four, five hundred people paying you forty dollars a month, if one person cancels, then the impact on you from that cancellation is way less than if you've got a smaller amount of people who are paying you once per year a big lump sum. If one person per month cancels, then that actually can represent quite a significant amount of your income. And one of the main reasons people set up membership sites is for the stability and the predictability that comes from having that sort of recurring revenue that grows bit by bit over time. That stability goes out of the window to a degree if you're relying solely on annual billing because there's so many different issues that can come up, but also because of the impact financially that cancellations can have. Another thing that we often find when people are paying monthly is there's a little bit more of an impetus to actually log in and use the site since they're paying more frequently. So someone's paying on an ongoing basis, they're going to want to get in there and actually use it, otherwise they're wasting their money. Now, that can be a good or a bad thing. Whereas if somebody sign up for a year, there's no real urgency. Someone will sign up for a year today and they'll think, ah, well, I don't need to log in this week or even this month because I've still got 12 months to actually get in there and use what I'm paying for. Whereas when someone's paying monthly, they want to be using it month to month. Now that, of course, can be a good and a bad thing because if someone's paying monthly and they go two or three months without using their membership they're far more likely to cancel than someone who's paid up for a full year because again what we're talking about in terms of that urgency to be using what you're paying for so those are some of the things to consider when it comes to monthly pricing there's definitely big benefits to it and it is probably one of the most common pricing strategies and structures for membership websites it's what people typically expect with a membership now in terms of billing annually what you will find is that this can improve the quality of your member base because you'll generally have fewer people signing up but because it's a higher buy-in People then have a little bit more invested, a little more skin in the game. They've given a bit more thought to their buying decision. And so usually that all adds up to a slightly higher caliber of member inside your community because it's a more considered purchase decision. And because of the amount of investment that an annual membership typically involves, people show up ready to actually make use of your membership and engage in a positive manner. You'll also find with annual billing that you have more room financially for promotions, discounts, and offers. Since it's a higher ticket item, you've got a greater profit margin to play with. And this also means that if you're doing any form of paid advertising, there's room for a higher member acquisition cost. So you can spend a bit more on advertising. And with things like affiliate schemes, if you've got affiliates promoting your membership, 20% commission in one shot on an annual purchase, that's several hundreds of dollars, is going to be much more appealing than offering 20% of a smaller monthly payment on a recurring basis. Now, again, 
Even with that considered, somebody could potentially make more as an affiliate if the member they refer sticks around long term. From an affiliate's point of view, that side of things, you know, somebody actually being retained and continuing to pay month after month, that's out of their control. So they're relying on you to deliver the goods that are actually going to get people to stick around, which will mean that ongoing commission for them. So Again, looking at it from an affiliate's point of view, would they rather have $100 today or $100 spread out over 12 months, assuming that you do enough to keep members sticking around long enough for them to earn that? Most affiliates are going to go for the first option. So it definitely gives you something that's much more appealing for affiliates if that's going to be a big part of your marketing. Now, if you know that members of your site will need to commit to a longer period or they'll need to be a member for more than just a month or two in order to get results. So if you have a fixed process they need to go or a specific program, then again, there's more chance of that happening with annual. If you're offering any form of coaching for your members, you're probably going to get better results with annual than with monthly because, you know, when you're on monthly, if someone cancelled after month one, you're just getting started with those guys. You're not going to be able to deliver a result necessarily in month one compared to your ability to to deliver a result over a longer period of time. So again, more chance of getting the right sort of people or the right sort of mindset for that type of offering if they've joined on an annual subscription. And of course, with annual, you still have the option of giving people the choice of joining monthly as a potential downsell. So, you know, if you're employing any form of checkout abandonment, so if you've got automated follow-ups for someone who maybe has started the process of registering, but then for whatever reason hasn't followed through and hasn't gone on to become a member, you can always do an automated follow-up with them to offer them the monthly option, just in case they were put off by the fact that you only had the yearly subscription available. So you can still play about with that. And of course, a big plus point for annual subscriptions is it's more cash in your business. Every transaction is a higher cash injection and memberships generally being a higher margin business, that means a lot more money in the bank to play about with, to reinvest and so on. So definite pros and cons on either side. Monthly, usually a bit more stable. It's a slower burn. You're not getting huge cash injections. It's more affordable and all that sort of stuff. Annual, generally better where you need that longer commitment period to actually get results. It means your transactions are higher value, even though there is that higher chance of having issues on the rebuild and so on. So definitely clear pros and cons on either side. So which do you choose? Well, And the great thing is you don't have to choose one or the other. If in considering the pros and cons, there's a clear winner for you in terms of what you're offering, in terms of your market and your general audience profile, then that's fantastic. But if you don't feel like there's just one choice that would fit, that probably means that either would be good for you. And so you can, of course, offer both. Unless you have a very compelling reason for going monthly only or annual only, then we do typically recommend having both options available. This gives you the best of both worlds. And in fact, it's been proven by research as well as in our own tests and observations in our community that having two options side by side increases sales. So not only do you get the benefits of both monthly and annual, but you get that little extra bump that comes from putting two options side by side on a sales page. Now, if you were offering both, typically the way that you'll do it is you'll discount the annual so that it works out cheaper than if someone were to pay 12 monthly installments. So rather than $50 a month and then $600 a year, you do $50 a month or $500 a year. Essentially, you're giving them two months free as a reward for the longer commitment. That's a general rule of thumb when you're offering these two options side by side. Your annual will generally be 10 times the monthly payment Then you get to highlight that discount as an incentive for people to take that annual option. So this, again, gives you the best of both worlds and they complement each other very well in terms of appealing to different people and appealing to sales triggers in different sorts of mindsets. So for people who are more price sensitive, seeing the small figure of $50 a month next to the larger figure of $500 a year makes the $50 seem like much better value than if that were the only option on the page. 
Contrasting that, someone who is more attracted to a good deal, who isn't necessarily restrained by their budget or price sensitive, but they like a good deal and they're willing to commit, they'll be drawn into the fact that they're getting that nice discount by going annual. So the two options work quite well in tandem with each other. Now, the one instance in which I'd avoid offering both an annual and a monthly option would be if you were also having multiple tiers of your membership product. So if you had three or four different levels in your membership where maybe some people get more content or more perks or more features, it's probably going to be too much to also throw in the two different billing options as well. Too many options will start to cause problems. You don't want to have a bronze level with monthly and annual version, a silver level with monthly and annual, a gold with monthly and annual. That's too many options to choose from. Keep things simple. Of course, monthly and annual aren't the only options. If you want something that's kind of an in-between, then you might consider quality pricing. This gives you the added commitment within your membership base while also keeping it more affordable than asking someone to subscribe for 12 months. Now, I wouldn't bother with a six-month option or a nine-month option or anything like that. I think monthly, quarterly, annual are three solid choices. We have had people in the past ask about weekly pricing or daily pricing. There are very, very, very few instances where that would be a good idea. In fact, I can't think of a single example of a market or a membership type where weekly billing would be the best option. Again, keep it simple. Monthly and annual, unless you want that sort of in-between, in which case you might experiment with quarterly pricing. So again, I would generally recommend offering the two options side by side, unless you have a very compelling reason to only offer one of those options on the front end. But even if that's the case, I would still have the other option available as a potential upsell or a downsell. So if somebody's joining with a monthly membership, then around about the three or four month mark, you would then offer them the ability to upgrade to an annual membership. And similarly, we talked before about potentially using the monthly offering as a downsell or an alternative to somebody who hasn't been able to join up on an annual plan. So even if you only put one of those options out there publicly, keep the other one in your back pocket for promotions further down the line. All right, so I hope you found that advice on your billing frequency useful. And if you've been on the fence about whether you should offer monthly billing, annual billing, both, whatever, hopefully today's episode has helped you get some clarity and to think about some of the things that quite often you might not even be aware of when it comes to the implications of your decision about how frequently to charge your paying members. Next week concludes our little trip into the vault. We've got another fantastic episode for you. We'll be talking about how to keep the peace and maintain harmony inside your membership community so it remains a positive place to be for your members. That's a great, great episode. I'm looking forward to bringing it to you. I'll be back again next week with that episode. I'll see you then. If you enjoyed this week's episode of the Membership Guys podcast, we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com. The Membership Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. Whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be or whether your website's already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Membership Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, step-by-step membership roadmap, exclusive member-only discount perks and tools, as well as our supportive, active community that will help you along the way with feedback, encouragement, and advice, the Membership Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage, and grow a successful membership business. Check it out at membershipacademy.com.